Well, I did it again. I bought another toy. So this one, I've been looking for an excavator for a long time. These things are hard to find and I got really lucky. I found an auction and I got a great price on this thing. At least I think I did. We're not going to talk about the price right now, but we'll talk later. I, uh, I've been looking so long, I couldn't find them. And this was the size that I wanted. Uh, it's a good brand. I was looking for this or Komatsu, some of the, the Japanese equipment. I bought this thing sight unseen. Uh, basically, I had the, the word of the auction company that everything on it functioned. And at the price that I got, you know, even if there is, there's going to be some problems. Any old machine. Undercarriage looks good. This side, he put a new track on. Uh, the guy was using it for like loading trash bins or something. The bucket's in bad shape, but that's fine. I can get a new bucket. This track's a little, uh, little worse for wear, but it's still got some life left in it. So I see why he didn't replace it. Cutting edge on the blade looks reasonable. You can see some hydraulic leaks. There's some areas that are a little, a little wet, but uh, nothing extreme. And he seemed like a reasonable guy. I mean, this he he just bought a bigger one, 3,200 hours on it, I think. Yeah, let's get this thing off here and check it out. So this is one of those backup beepers. This thing is not any longer on a job site or a place of employment, so I am disabling this. Ha, <laughs> nice. Bullet connector. Easily unplugged. Can be put back if you ever need to. It's almost like they knew someone would do that. Now the other issue is, it doesn't track straight. And it has two different tracks on it. So this is the old track, that's the new track. This one definitely goes slower, and I think it's just too tight. So uh, I'm gonna check the tension on it. When I bought it, I asked him, I asked him how he adjusted the tracks, and he said, you just get them as tight as you can get them. And that is not correct. Um, I'm hoping once I get them adjusted properly, uh, they're gonna track better. So let's see what we can do. And the way you tension these, there's a grease zerk here. You're using the pressure of the grease gun to push a piston against this idler, which then tensions the track actually not too bad you know on a bigger excavator you do like an inch here but I was checking the service manual on this and it said half an inch and so that might be a little tight but it's not it's not much I loosen this side just a little getting it where I want it which is just a touch on the loose side and then I flip to the other side to check the tension over there and they are very different look at how much slack there is there that's a uh, that's a good two inches. It's supposed to be about half an inch according to the service manual. So I grease this side only to find that it is as tight as it will go. It won't get any tighter. I think there's something wrong with the grease adjuster on this side. You know, it's working. It's not throwing the track or anything. I'm gonna have to think on that. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Some of you experienced excavator guys, comment below. Tell me what you think you, that I should do or what you would do. Besides clean out all that grease. So I again adjusted the other side to match, and I can tell you it did not make any difference in the way the machine tracks. Let's move on to a different problem. Back here, up underneath, it is very oily, and the hydraulic pump is right above that. Pretty gunky. So I definitely have a leak up there. Question is where? Now I've looked in here, obviously pretty tight quarters. I'm gonna have to take some things apart to see what's going on down in there. Hopefully maybe I'll just find a loose connection or something. I don't want to find a cracked hydraulic pump. That would stink. 
But let's see what we can figure out. A lot of oil right in this area. I'm kind of thinking actually maybe coming from this connection right here. And the whole bottom of that thing is just covered in gook, oil, and muck. So I think it's time for a power washer. It's like half an inch of sludge. Nice. Love it. This does make it much nicer to work on, but the idea here is to be able to locate that leak. When everything's so oily, you just have no idea where it's coming from. I'm going to do some degreaser, really get it clean, and then I can keep a close eye on this next time I run it and see where it's leaking from. So I'm going to hit it with some super clean degreaser. We're going to let that sit, give it another spray down, and we'll see you tomorrow. Sometimes... Things are obvious. So yeah, it's uh, it's leaking out of this right here. And uh, I'm not, not real familiar with what that is. When in doubt, look it up. This is from the service manual. This is the bolt that's leaking. So this is the hydraulic pump. And it doesn't tell me what this is called, which is kind of annoying. But here's an exploded diagram of it right here and we are talking about this so there's 41 is a nut 39 is a set screw and 40 is a seal washer and i think that seal washer is where i'm leaking uh, if you're not familiar with hydraulic pumps they're they're basically pistons that as it's rotating get pushed in and out by an angled plate called the swash plate and that is the swash plate right there and there are springs down in this section that they don't give me a name for. And this set screw is adjusting the pressure of the springs on the swash plate. That's the best I can tell looking through this. I'm sure there's a better explanation, but I found this. There's the exact bolt we're talking about. It says, do not disassemble when there are no trouble around these parts, such as an oil leak, which is exactly what I have. When disassembly is done, it makes horsepower control change. So the amount of spring tension on the swash plate is going to affect how the hydraulic pump pumps. What it tells me to do is to measure this dimension L. And L right there is the distance to the end of that set screw from the housing. So I'm going to get my caliper out, I'm going to measure that and make a note of it so that I can put it back in the same position. Maybe I can tighten that nut down. It may be, it may be that simple, but I want to get the measurement first before I start fooling with it. All right, so I really need a depth mic, but believe it or not, I don't have one. But I've measured this many times, many orientations. 560 thousands. And I don't think that this is needing to be accurate to the thousandth, but I want to just get it as close as I can. The set screw is really tight. I'm just going to see if I can crank that jam nut down with a good old nut rounder. Oh yeah, it wasn't that tight. Wouldn't that be something if that's all it takes? Man, that would be wonderful. Yeah, and the set screw did not turn when I tightened that. So I'm gonna wipe the oil off of that and we will check on that later and see if there's any more oil coming out of it. I checked later and there was no oil at all coming from that area. I eventually discover another leak under here that we will address later in the video. So I knew there was a hydraulic leak here somewhere and I wasn't sure where, but it's pretty apparent now. I cleaned everything up and I've let it sit and I actually had a rag wrapped around it right here, which got totally soaked. This whole hose is like wet with oil. And when you go up here to the joint, the joint unfortunately is dry. So tightening that is not gonna do anything. The bottom of this hose right there looks pretty rough. So I need a new hose. I'm sure that's gonna be cheap.
and I've got a catch basin underneath. I'm trying to catch as much oil as I can, but it's hydraulics. You're gonna spill oil. That's just a fact. All right, I got a new hose. Uh, $190. This is a one inch, 3000 PSI hose. It's kind of what I expected. Not cheap, not horrible. So this is a flare fitting. Where there's flare fittings, you don't need uh, sealant. In some places, it's just pipe fittings. So there you need a, a thread sealant. My hydraulic shop recommended this. ND Industries Vibratite 440. High pressure thread sealant for hydraulics. You don't want to use Teflon tape on hydraulics. If any of that Teflon tape gets in the system and gets in the pump, it can really mess things up. So use a dedicated hydraulic thread sealant. It's probably too much. I'm sure someone with more experience than me in the comments will tell me what an idiot I am. I'm okay with that. I learn a lot reading your all's comments. Click. So that's fixed. Now let's work on something else. Not sure what happened to their wipers, but I don't think I'm going to be using that anytime soon. A lot more headroom to step out without that there. I don't need this thing enclosed. I'm going to keep it under cover most of the time. So it's not going to get rained on and that wouldn't matter anyway. This window is missing. The door is missing. I can't enclose it anyway. So I think I'm just going to take this off because it's not really doing anything except taking up space. That's much better. A lot more headroom. Don't tell my wife I know how to use one of these. No, I just want to get the machine cleaned up and give it a good look over. So there's not a drop of oil coming from this guy, but I do see there's some oil right there. And I went to the Yanmar dealer and asked them what this thing was. They did not know this thing right here. I'm going to take it apart. If it's a flare fitting, it just needs to be tighter. It's probably pipe threads and I've just put some sealant on it. So we'll fix that while we're here. this thing would get loose. So there's an o-ring here and um, it's not round, it's got a flat bottom and it looks fine. So the way this works, this hole obviously needs to be pointing in a certain direction and there's no guarantee that the threads are going to be in the right spot when this is pointing where it needs to point. So you thread it in, you get it to where that's pointing where you want 
Then you tighten this down, which squeezes that O-ring against the housing of the hydraulic pump. Now, what I suspect, there was a very narrow space here. They probably were not able to get a wrench in there to tighten that any further. I think that was probably the issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some thread sealing on here. It won't hurt anything, but with an O-ring there, it's probably not necessary. What I'm getting at is I think, had I known how this worked, I could have left it in place and just tightened that. That probably would have done the trick. I'm gonna put it back together, and if I have to, I'll make a custom wrench to get around that nut that'll be narrow. I can just use some quarter inch plate and cut it so that it'll uh, fit over that. All right, let me clean this thing up. I wanna get these threads all nice and clean. Looks like they used Teflon tape, which is kind of, I mean, people do it, but I don't think it's a good idea because if this stuff gets out and gets in your hydraulic pump, you end up with a problem. So I'm gonna clean this all out and we're gonna use liquid thread sealant that's made for hydraulics that is compatible with the hydraulic oil. If any gets into the system, it won't hurt a thing. You know, looking at this thing, there's a tiny hole that goes up into this chamber and that looks like an adjustment screw. This almost seems like it's a, um, like a pressure tank, a small one just to give a little bit of spring to the hydraulic system. I'm totally guessing here, prevent like pressure spikes, something like that. If anyone out there knows for sure what this is, let me know, because I asked at the Yanmar dealer and they looked at it, they weren't sure what it was either. Uh, but I just showed them a picture. Maybe if it was in their hand, they'd be able to tell. No numbers on it. See, my wrench will not reach in there. Too fat. Pretty tight quarters for filming, but the wrench fits. Now I think I could tighten that even more with this wrench, even once I have it all back together. So I'm pretty happy with that. I love hydraulic oil, especially when it's running down my arm. Not perfect, but a lot cleaner. And more importantly, when something leaks, I'm gonna be able to see, hopefully, that there's a new leak. Certainly a lot better than it was. I really wish I had time to do all the maintenance now while I have it all apart, but I don't have the parts or the time. So I'm putting it back together. We'll do that later. Mm. 
I'm not sure it's coming across on camera, but all of the body panels on this machine have lots of dents and bends and things that could use my attention. That thing runs really well. But I did not leave this track that loose. Looks like I need to rebuild the track adjusters on both sides. This is the worst one of the bunch. This thing isn't really closing right. This piece got so bent, you know, even though I did body work on it, it's still, it's not the right shape anymore. And that should be in. See, the latch barely works because of that. So I need to bend that in somehow. I'm gonna do the responsible thing. And rather than tearing it up with a hammer, I'm gonna tear it up with a big piece of wood. Yeah, that's a lot better actually. Yeah, the latch is working right now. I'm calling it good. Far from perfect, but certainly looks better. Now it's time for some maintenance, which I suspect is long overdue. First up, engine oil. Wonder how long it's been since that was changed. <clears throat> now black isn't necessarily bad, but I just don't think this guy was that into maintenance. He was running his business and didn't have time to fool with this thing. This thing's just in the way. I keep having to stoop over. I'm going to be hitting my head on it constantly, but it's only on with two bolts. So I'm taking it off. small opening. That is an annoying film spell. Gotta make the thing telescope out and be bigger or something. Using the good stuff in this baby. Man, this was expensive. How much do you think this costs? Two and a half gallons of oil. It's AMS oil. This is top of the line. 140 bucks. Oh, I spilled a drop. That's like a quarter. <laughs> Looking at the fuel system, I see that they've done something that um, I may have to undo. This filter is not stock. That's a Napa inline filter. And I checked the specs. It did not have an inline filter like that. This line comes from the fuel tank and the fuel goes this way from this line. It goes to this lift pump and then goes to the actual fuel filter. But the way it's supposed to go from the tank, it's supposed to go here to the fuel separator, which they have disconnected both sides of. And I notice that this filter's got some junk in it. I think I'm gonna maintain this inline filter as a pre-filter, but I do wanna get the fuel separator back in action. So 
That thing's like got crud on it and these have been unplugged. Who knows, an insect probably crawled up in there and built a nest. So I'm gonna pop that thing off of there and take it all apart, clean it up real well. We'll just drain it out like that. Yeah, there's a bunch of crud in the bottom of that too. I understand if you're getting crud out of your tank, putting the pre-filter, but uh, why not preserve this? Why take this out of the loop? Yeah, see all that junk in there? Looks like rust. I'm gonna keep the inline filter right down here. So I need to cut the hose there. All right, so now we're coming from the fuel tank through this pre-filter into the fuel separator, out of the fuel separator, into the lift pump, and then into this fuel filter, which I need to change now. So typically whenever I'm working on a diesel, I pre-fill everything and uh, bleed it and do the best I can to keep air from getting in the lines. But apparently this is a self-bleeding system. I have never worked on a diesel that self-bleeds, but they say just change the filters and then crank it until it starts. Uh, I think if it cranks for more than like 30 seconds, you're supposed to give it a break, but uh, yeah, let's go start this thing and see what happens. I'm gonna leave you sitting here so we can see the fuel coming through. Funny, it started right up. And look at that. It's uh, filling up. Lift pumps running. Wow, that's easy. Okay, well, look at this. This thing's already got crud in it, and a lot of it. Wow. So I'm probably gonna need to clean out this fuel tank at some point. Um, I was thinking about it. I bet you this guy didn't realize that that's a fuel separator and not just a screen. I bet you he thought, well, this screen's expensive. These are only $5, so, you know, hey, you might as well use it. He probably thought he was just trading equivalent things. Yeah, I'm glad it's there because all that junk would be going into this and at least it's catching that. So underneath, uh, this is the bottom of the fuel tank. This is not where the fuel comes out to go to the machine, but it is the lowest point of the tank. And good old Yanmar has put a, a valve and a little drain pipe there. The drain pipe was up inside. I fished it out, cleaned it out a little bit. So I'm gonna drain some into this jar and see what we've got. I don't think my valve is working. A little bit's coming out. Hmm. Yep. Little diesel bath. I mean, there's crud in there, but it's not horrible. I don't know if I'm gonna worry about that. I might just keep changing the filter. All right, so here's the fuel fill spout, and it has a screen on it that itself looks pretty gross. I mean, that's on the inside of the screen. It's catching some stuff like it's supposed to do, but that makes me wonder if they weren't filling it from a dirty tank, and that's what all that junk in there is. But how about we put a new one in? All right. Let's change the oil in this final drive here. Well, darn it, it decided to start raining. So we'll have to do that later. 
I really need a big covered area here where I can work on stuff so that when the rain comes, it doesn't matter. And when it's really baking hot, I actually have shade. And that's on my list. Pretty dark. I think it's been a while since that was changed. So this oil looks really crappy and it even stinks. Maybe that it's special oil, but I suspect this stuff is just super, super old. I'm tempted to want to flush this out with something like diesel fuel, but I don't think that's a good idea. I mean, this oil is still oil and uh, the little bit that's left in there after blowing it out, I think is inconsequential. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it up and probably plan on changing this again fairly soon. Now the procedure on filling these is to fill them from the top until the oil comes out of the middle. We got this from the dealer. This is their travel motor oil, full synthetic. Uh, it's about 10 bucks a quart, not too bad. But uh, this is the good stuff. And it doesn't stink just smells like oil. All right, we are full. Let's do the other side. So this is the side that wasn't spinning as fast. And, you know, I guess I'm hoping that I'm gonna find that this oil looks bad or maybe it's low, but that doesn't really make sense to me. It's gears. Why would it not spin as fast? Now the end of this isn't even really wet. So it does make me think that the oil might've been low. Well, no water in it. Same nasty smelling black stuff. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't smell like sulfur. A lot of gear oil will smell like rotten eggs because it has sulfur from some of the friction modifiers. I don't know. I think this smells burnt. It doesn't smell good. I don't understand people that spend so much money for equipment and then don't maintain it. Yeah, there's definitely not as much oil in this side. So do I have a leak? Where'd the oil go? The fact that I can't even get it off is a testament to how long it's been since this was done. Man. Shit. Don't expect this to survive, but yeah, let's see what happens here. All right, let's try three. I don't think this is gonna make it, but. Yeah, this, uh, this guy stripped out on that. Man. Nice long cheater bar here. And this is a Allen wrench I'm not really that worried about. Look at that. Nice and clean, so if those leak, I should be able to see. For both sides, I'm gonna start it up, I'm gonna lift it up, run the track back and forth, and then I'll come back and check the level and make sure that we're still good. All right, let's see how our oil looks. I can tell you I already checked the other side and it was good. All right. Yeah, we got oil right to the opening. It's right where it should be. 
Now I want to grease the swing bearing and swing gear. Now down underneath here, you can't really see it, but behind there there's a bearing and a big gear. And there's a hydraulic motor that drives a pinion that interacts with that big gear. And that's what makes the rotator, <laughs> that's what makes the excavator swing around. Well, where you grease those is right here. But the thing is, is just greasing it in one position doesn't actually do anything but grease that position of the, the big gear and bearing. So you have to grease and then move, you know, like... 20 degrees, grease again, 20 degrees, grease again, maybe not 20, 45 might be enough. So I'm happy to say the two leaks I had were on the bottom of this thing, and then also an area down here that I can reach with my hand, but I can't really show you. But no leak. So the hydraulic leaks are fixed, at least in this area. That's awesome. All right, last but not least, we're going to drain the hydraulic oil and replace that. This is the hydraulic oil tank. This is the return and there's a return filter in here that I'm going to change. And then this has a suction filter in it that I'm going to change. I, I read about a spring being in there. So it pushes itself up. Yeah. Just sits on a little shelf down in there. Let me show you in here. Now a lot of what you're seeing down there is reflection. You can see that's the suction filter right in the middle there. Spring sitting on top of it. And over there inside that is the filter that I just changed. That's the return filter. Not a lot of crud in the bottom of the tank. Looks pretty good. So I need a high flow funnel and sometimes the best funnel is just a, bo a bottle with the bottom cut off. I put the drain plug back in off camera by the way. All right, so the ball is floating. It's a little under the top, 
but the machine's cold right now. So when that oil heats up, it's gonna expand and that's perfect. So here's the first of many projects I'm gonna do with this excavator. This right here is an old carbide tank and carbide was used to produce uh, acetylene gas that was used for lighting in the house. My house was built in 1850. This is calcium carbide. This is not, uh, of course, the same carbide that's used in tooling. Calcium carbide was what's used in miners' headlamps. When you mix it with water, it produces acetylene gas that, of course, can then burn and produce light. What would happen here in this tank, they would add the calcium carbide, they would add water, and they would put a lid on the tank, which would pressurize the gas. The gas would go through a system of pipes to the house. Most rooms had a carbide light in the center, like this one, and here's where you would adjust the gas flow. Ours have all been converted to electric at this point, of course. This old tank might seem like a piece of history, but it's really just an obstruction in the middle of our garden. Uh, it's an eyesore, it's rusting. It's time for it to go. Looks like it just takes a snap ring. That's kind of a chintzy way to do it. I doubt that was, that wasn't Yanmar, that was this thumb. I'll have to fix that with something better later, but for now I'll just put another snap ring on it. Don't worry, it's only temporary unless it works. So here's all the junk I got out of the bottom of that hole. I was ripping the bottom out in just little pieces. Pretty long piping. That'll all go to recycling. One project down but a lot more work to do on this excavator can you see how loose that track is right there i've got to work on the track adjusters i've got to clean out the fuel tank and the the hydraulic cylinder for the blade has a lot of bypass it doesn't hold its position very well which is pretty annoying while you're digging so i'm gonna have to rebuild that cylinder too but pretty happy with this machine really nice machine and once i do these few more things to it i think it's going to be tip top and you're going to see a lot more of this thing Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Did you think I forgot? I almost did. Um, so what did I pay for this machine? Well, I mean, keep in mind, these things are just not cheap. I mean, I, I've seen ones just for parts going for like $8,000 with uh, with no hope of, of fixing them and getting them working again. Uh, so this was in an auction, and I paid $18,000 in the auction with the buyer's premium, which of course, man, those are not cheap. Uh, the total came out to 20,700. You know, that, that's a lot of money. That's not, uh, that's not chicken feed, but uh, I actually have some jobs that I'm gonna do. So this thing's gonna be earning me money. It's also, I've got so many things to do with it around the farm. Um, 20 grand for a machine, you know, a, a Yanmar with 
30, 3,300 hours on it. Uh, I, I feel like I got a pretty good deal. Um, disagree? Comment below. Let me know what you think.